All right, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I was actually not intending on taking any more jobs because I did have the plans to actually start working on a extended cap build for me, back and body. We were gonna be beginning a new build for me, but something came up. Uh, this customer, Manny, came out to me, reached out to me and asked me, have you ever done a crew cab short bed on a single cab? And I told him, no, I have not, but I would love the opportunity. So here we are. We have a new customer build. Manny dropped off his newer body style Silverado single cab that we're actually going to be doing the, like I said, the crew cab short bed on it. So luckily this one is already, he brought it to me without the bed. So that's one less thing I got to do. But this one is going to be a little bit of a challenge. So essentially, I do believe the front... Uh, mounts are the same as the short bed. I don't know about these So I think all I'll have to do is shorten it right in here because we don't want to lose the notch. We definitely want to keep that um, So I think shortening it right in this area We should be able to shorten it to fit that crew cab bed But just to be sure I am going to be waiting to get the crew cab or the yeah the crew cab bed here That way I can measure all the points and make sure that we're going to be all squared up with those um, so along with that, <clears throat> let me set my thirsty beverage over here. Along with that, we are going to be having to move now the differential forward since that short crew cab bed is going to be having the wheel wells move forward a little bit. The differential will be have to move forward. With that being moved forward, we will no longer be able to use the fuel tank because it is going to be short. It is going to be pretty close to the differential. So that is going to be removed, taken out of the way. He will be getting a custom fuel cell made. I don't know if I'll get it made and shipped to me, so we might be able to install it. But if not, he said he will do that in the future. So uh, we will be have to, have to get rid of the fuel tank, and he will have to get a shorter drive shaft made since the differential will be moving forward. So the hangers in the back should be fine, and I think the only thing that we'll have to do is possibly move the hangers in the front forward. So hopefully that doesn't give me any issues there. But other than that, I think it should be a pretty straightforward build. I mean, all we're doing is just cutting and moving forward. I just gotta know exactly where I need to cut and move it forward. So um, aside from the shortening of the frame, we're gonna be doing shock relocation brackets on the back, adjustable ones from Twisted Metalworks. So in case he ever wants to go to coilovers, he already has those on there and he can just go ahead and completely go away with the um, the uh, leaf springs, do a four link in the back with a pan hard bar and he can go ahead and convert to the coilovers. And lastly, in the front, he wants me to do a shock relocation kit on the hood since he doesn't have his factory springs on there. That's pretty simple right there. So are the shock relocation brackets, but the frame, that's going to be the challenge i have never done one so i want to take this opportunity and learn and thank you to many for letting for trusting me and cutting up his truck shorting it up so that's going to be the challenge uh on this build so hopefully all goes well first things first i'm going to be lifting the truck up off the ground i'm going to be putting it on my blocks here that way i have room under there to be able to pull the fuel cell out well up underneath and be able to brace everything whenever i start cutting it but the goal for today is uh pulling the wiring harness off uh, like i said pulling lifting the truck up off the ground we're going to be pulling the fuel cell out disconnecting the drive shaft uh possibly removing the leaf springs i'm not sure yet but um i might leave that alone but essentially just lifting it up, disconnecting, and getting it cleaned and prepped. That way, whenever we do get his crew cab bed, we will be ready to go then. So I'm not going to be doing any cutting until I get that bed. That way I can make sure about all those uh, mounts, make sure they're going to be all squared up. So uh, I think that's going to be it for this build. So we're going to be putting you guys on the time lapse, and we'll just do the process of lifting it up, like I said, and cleaning up and removing some of this stuff. So without further ado, Let's go ahead and get started on this build.
today we finally got the bed from the salvage yard. Uh, Manny actually works at a salvage yard, so he was able to get one for himself for his truck. And now we're getting ready to start. Um, I'm gonna cut out first the hole for the notch. That way I wanna set it on the bed. And from the rough measurements that I did, the two holes back there and there line up and also this one. So I will be able to keep this uh, mounting location for the bed possibly, but just to be sure, I wanna go ahead and like I mentioned, cut the just the inside of the the bed right here, just the where the notch would go. I'm not gonna cut yet uh, the wheelhouses until I make sure that we are gonna clear. He has dropped pretty low, but we won't know for sure if we need to cut these out until we set the bed on. So uh, the reason why I wanna set it on on the truck right now is one, I wanna check that uh, front, front mounting location and make sure it does actually line, uh, line up with this one. And secondly, I wanna see how far the front of the bed is from the cab, just to double check and make sure how much I need to shorten it from the rough estimates that I came up with, uh, just measuring the bed on the floor like this and uh, measuring it from that one location that supposedly is close enough or close to the front mounting location uh we should have to shorten the frame nine inches so i don't want to make any cuts on the frame until i make sure that that is correct so first thing i'm going to do is uh, try to get these bolts out but more likely i'm gonna have to grind them off like i did on uh luis's uh single cab because those bolts do tend to seize up and uh break off or your Torx bit will break off, which is what happened with mine. So regardless, I'm gonna have to grind that little plate off. So I'm gonna get started on uh, rough estimating the area where the notch is, uh, marking it on here, and then we'll go ahead and cut that, set the bed down. I'm gonna get my engine hoist back here so we can uh, start picking up the bed and try to set it on. So it's gonna be a little bit of a hassle, a little bit of a time lapse because it's not really something that is too complex. It's pretty easy. So essentially what I'm gonna do in order to cut the hole for the notch is I will use this center, this bolt hole with like this one, because this, that's where it mounts to. And I will measure from here up to about, right about here. So it's behind the, uh, right, right behind the shocks. So I will measure there. And then from the same hole, because we, we're still not sure about that one, from the same hole, I'll measure all the way up here and roughly cut it around right here give it about the same area uh between the notch and the bed on the front as the back and then just cut that around here and then again we'll measure from here all the way to the front cut, measure it out and then we'll be ready to cut it so uh let me go ahead and get my measurements made get that little shield off and then we'll be ready to uh, start making our cuts on the bed so Let's go ahead and get started. Got to get my AC running again because it is a hot one today. So I did have the door open for the house, blowing the nice cold air in here. So it's not as hot as it usually is, but it will heat up pretty quick. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start the time lapse and we'll get ready to start cutting on this bed. And actually, to be honest, uh, one more thing. I really don't like how these mounting locations are at or how they're welded not the best welds so not only that but if you look at it from this angle you can see how twisted and angled they are they're not really ideal so especially that one look how far that one twisted just because it didn't use any sort of spacers or washers in between the shock and the tabs so i'm going to be ordering some new tabs for them and cleaning that up if I had some tubing, which I'm actually, I might. Um, I might actually go ahead and just replace this tube because it looks like they cut this right here on both sides and re-welded that together. So, uh, but that will be later on. Right now, let's just focus on the bed right now. So let's go ahead and get started on that.
All right, well, there we have our notch cut out. And now begins the very intimidating and kind of scary process of trying to set the bed down and using my engine hoist with some ratchet straps to try and put the bed on. Now, this one is gonna be a little bit more of a challenge because usually I would have the truck as far forward as I can. Usually it would be up in there like I had Luis's truck and I could get the engine hoist in from the back, slide it up under the truck and set the bed in place because it's nice and open down here without a tailgate. But uh, with this one, I think I'm gonna have to try to see if I can set it down. When I pick it up, I'm gonna have to try to see if I can uh, uh, put it on from the side. So that's gonna be the challenge of today, see if I can set it on. So um, that's gonna be the task right now. So let's see if we can set this up. Again, we'll put you guys on a time lapse and see if I can set this bed down by myself. If not, I'll have to get my brother to come help me. So uh, let's go ahead and start uh, trying to get this bed down. So as you can see, it's a very delicate process of trying to balance this thing on here. And I got it kind of there, but I still won't know for sure until I actually pick it up even more and try to set it on the truck itself because it is, uh, the hoist is pretty close to this bed rail. But hopefully we don't have any clearance issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to attempt to set it on here and see if we don't kill ourselves in the process. I think you guys will have a better angle of it over here. So let's see if we can get this thing on. All right, well, it's on there. It lines up perfectly with that front mount like I mentioned before. So that is literally how much frame we're gonna have to cut out of the truck. So let's see if I can find my tape measure. I think if I, like I said last time, I do believe it was nine, nine inches that I had to cut out possibly. There it is, I see my tape measure. So if we measure the from the back of the cab to here, we're at 11 and a quarter inch. And we do need a, a gap between the, the cab and the bed. I don't remember exactly how much it is, but if we cut it at nine inch, if we cut it down nine inches or nine and a quarter, the bed will be two inches from the back, the back of the cab will be two inches from the back of the bed, or the front of the bed, technically. So, say if we shorten it, like I said, the nine inches, that's where the cab, or the edge of the bed would be. So we might need to do more, actually. Hold on, well, let me go measure my brother's truck, because he's, his is a crew cab, and 
he's actually got this same bed so let's just go off of his and see how far he's at and it's an inch and it's about an inch and a quarter so you can see how tight the gap is right there so we need to bring the bed up to where it's an inch and a quarter from the back of the cab so so if we take an inch and a quarter out we actually need to shorten the frame 10 inches so that's going to be quite a bit of frame that we got to cut out so somewhere right in there is where we're going to have to cut it i'm going to have to unfortunately i don't think i can make a z somewhere right in here so in this general area is where i'm going to have to cut the 10 and 10 inches out of because i'm trying to save this leaf spring mount because i don't want to move it because right there is pretty close pretty centered obviously it's going to be forward because it's going to be forward because it's uh got the flip kit plus an, i think a four inch flip uh, block on there so that moves it forward um i could move the bed forward but then i would have to move the bumper and all that stuff so we're not going to get into that um the only way we could correct that is if we put a some sort of four link uh system or a, th a wishbone three link uh, whenever we weld the brackets on we can set the bed the axle back an additional let's see it's four and a half inches on the front two and a half on the on the front or two and a half on the front four and a half on the on the back so we would need to move the axle back an inch so, so it's three and a half three and a half in the front three and a half in the front three and a half in the front three and a half in the back sorry it's been hot all day uh i went to work earlier this morning and um the heat's getting to me so an inch and a quarter is where we're gonna have to sh uh leave the gap between the back of the cab and the bed so we need to shorten this thing down 10 inches so now that we got the measurements um i'm gonna take the bed back off and then set it up back here out of the way and then we'll start i'm going to start cleaning up the frame and then just seeing where we're going to get those uh where we're going to shorten those 10 inches from this that's going to be quite a bit of frame to shorten so uh let me get this bed back off i'll put it back on the time let's get the bed off and then we'll uh see where we're at where we're going to cut that frame at So now that we know where we're going to be cutting, uh, anywhere from here forward, we would need, we could cut, but I would like to keep the location for the um, leaf spring bracket. I uh, was thinking, let's zoom out a little bit, if there was any way that I could cut this off and then just let it sit there. And then once I like, say if I, if I could shorten it somewhere right in here, and then Z it, I could weld this bracket back on, but I don't know how difficult that would be, which now that I'm thinking about it, that might be my best option. Reason being is because the only other place that I could shorten it would be down in here in this general area, right behind the cab mount and just right in front of here because this literally would be the only place if I can find my tape measure again, that I could shorten it. Because I was looking down here, and there's a seam, kind of like where the rear half of the frame is welded to the front half or the center half from factory. So like right in here. So right in here is where I could cut those 10 inches out. So I would cut it like right around in here. And this, obviously I would cut, I have to cut this out and the cross member for the fuel tank so this point right here would be almost up in here uh right behind the cab mount but the only uh issue with that 
is that it's literally right under the cab. And there would be no way for me to uh, weld it as best as I can. So that's why, that's one ish reason I don't wanna do it up in there. So our second option would be to do it somewhere back in here. Uh, say if we cut, go ahead and cut this bracket off, um, take again the center cross member right here for the fuel tank and I'm going to attempt to use a sawzall and just do a perfect cut right here and in order to set it back up because we are going to be we, I can't cut it like right up against the frame rail so I'm going to just I guess you could say estimate and cut it about an, a quarter inch away from the side of the frame rail and then what I would do is I have a piece of quarter inch uh, thick plate over there. It's four inches wide, which is literally probably the same width. Yeah, almost the same width as the leaf spring bracket. So with that quarter inch plate, I could space this bracket back out the quarter inch of the metal that I'm gonna have to grind off from in here. So that sounds like this gonna be a game plan. So essentially what we're gonna be doing is since the frame is going to be moving forward, say if I cut it right here and then we cut the 10 inches back in here somewhere. See if we do this. Okay, so if I cut it right up in here, right behind this mount, the 10 inch mark would be right up in here. So this point will literally be all the way up here. So the reason why I would do it back here is because it would still give me some area right here, some room to weld some reinforcement brackets, on, not only on the top, but on the bottom. Because again, if I cut it at the 10 inches right here, this point is gonna have to go straight over. So my, the frame will stop right here and then it'll, the bottom of the frame up here will now be like right here and all the way up here. So, it has to go straight, I can't drop it, otherwise the bed will be tilted like crazy. So we can't do that. So that's what I'm gonna have to end up doing probably, I think now that I, now that I think about it, is we're gonna cut it right behind this cab mount. Uh, obviously this is gonna go away because we don't need it and we're gonna go ahead, well actually now we ac actually keep this just for reinforcement purposes, the uh, fuel tank cross member. Just to re keep it reinforced, we're gonna keep that since we're gonna be cutting it right above in here. So it shouldn't be in the way. We'll cut it out once we start fully welding it. And that way we have a better area right here to box it up after we shorten it. So I think that's gonna be the game plan. So cutting this out, we're gonna use the Sawzall and cut this bracket out. Um, and then I'm gonna obviously, what I'll do is I'll like measure, do my measurements like this and how far it is off the uh, the floor. So that way we can get the same uh, general area once we get it back up in here because it is gonna stay in the same spot. It's just gonna be in that area where the weird Z is gonna be at. And then uh, I think the only other issue that I see is we're gonna have to keep right over there. That hole right there is where this bolt goes through. So that'll be the, the other issue. So that's gonna be the game plan. Cut this out. Cut the front leaf spring hanger off. We're gonna go ahead and just unbolt the leaf spring and then just let it hang down. Get, get it out of the way. It's not sitting on the wheels right now, so we'll just let it come down, sit, sit on the floor. Uh, we might just go ahead and take it out completely. Um, and we're literally gonna end up cutting the frame right here. Do a bunch of measurements, make sure we get a nice little vertical cut, and then just pretty much clean this area up and then mark our frame, measure it 10 times to make sure I don't fuck this shit up and then we'll finally get to cutting. So, uh, I mean, there's really not much I can show you guys. I'm just literally gonna take everything apart. So the only thing I really can do is put you guys on the time-lapse. But that is the game plan that we're gonna be going with. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time for to get to it today. Uh, today is a Saturday. This video is gonna be going up tomorrow for Sunday. And uh, so I think next, next uh, Sunday we will see the results after we end up cutting it because it's getting kind of late today gotta get uh the kids my, my kids some dinner so we're gonna end this video here it is burning hot in the garage right now even though i have my little portico going but 
stay tuned for this because this is something I have not attempted before. It's actually pretty straightforward now that I'm thinking about it. I come out here and kind of see, um, kind of assess the situation. So uh, that's going to cut it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, share the videos. We're blowing up the channel pretty quick. Uh, lots of subscribers are coming new to the channel. So thank you again, guys, for sharing the videos. Uh, the merch is linked down below, uh, elgayobuilt.bigcartel.com. I still have some few stickers. I have the lanyards that I still have. And I do believe I have a few hats and the El Gallo Built shirts. I still have some of those available, but most of them are in blue. Um, stay tuned. I might try to get some sweaters here coming for wintertime. So keep an eye out for that. So that'll be it, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next Sunday.